Welcome everyone, I'm Atati Hero, and today we're gonna be talking about the survival game The Forest. The game was developed and published by N9 Games and was released for Windows and PS4 on April 30th and November 6th, 2018, respectively. Some complaints I will raise are PS4 specific since that's the version I've played. The game follows Eric LeBlanc on his journey to find his son who was kidnapped by an unknown man after their plane crashed. Eric must survive on his own in an environment unfamiliar to him, explore cave systems and fight off the cannibals and mutants that inhabit the island. Since this is a survival game, let's start off with the mechanics that make it so. You have a hunger and thirst meter as well as the possibility to catch illnesses. You refill the hunger gauge by eating various berries, mushrooms and meats, while you can refill the thirst meter by drinking any sort of water, soda or booze, but drinking contaminated water can cause illnesses. Additionally, booze restores your thirst but reduces your stamina. While stamina and limited carrying capacity are things, surprisingly carrying capacity is not limited by weight, but rather by volume. It is not that you can carry more sodas because they each weigh 1.5 pounds and you can only carry a total of 15, you just don't have the inventory space for more than 10 of them. This being a variable, based on the item itself and not an overall thing, also means that while you're not able to carry all of the necessities that you may want, you can still carry half of the island on your back with stuff like having over 200 leaves on you at all times and stuff like that. The game features a variety of weapons including DIY and pre-built ones such as spears you can craft and things like the katana which can be found in a cave. There's also multi-purpose tools such as the axes and chainsaw which can act as weapons while also aiding you in deforesting the area. The caves initially house more cannibals and they are where you find the first mutants, but as days pass, things change. First, it's just the mutants that join the cannibals in attacking your base, then the smurfs, and then the smurf mutants. There's some other stuff that shows up as well, but I'll avoid talking about that because of spoilers, so just know they're out there. Now, here's what I think are some PS4 specific things I've noticed. For one, the control scheme takes some getting used to at first, but whatever, made for PC first, ported to PS4. Motion blur is just there. You can't turn it off or make it less apparent, it's just there. The game also technically has performance and looks graphics modes, and the game's graphics do change somewhat, but it's really a choice between having around 15 and 30 frames of input lag, if not even more. There's also semi-frequent screen tearing that's visible to the naked eye sometimes, at times the game crashes on loading into an online game or respawning if you are playing with other people, and physics and assessing new areas make the game stop and think for a second more often than not. Problem is, this second can range from an actual second to making you think the game crashed. <laughs> you are on fire! Whoa! Anything! Whoa. Anything that is concerning Whoa. physics breaks this game, Those I swear! Frames. Now into the sound design, the game from what I could tell has next to no music aside from small pieces and stings for plot developments and the menus. So I was wrong. But anyway, they make it work, because the game is supposed to feel real and visceral at times, and when it comes to that, it's good. Going into a cave where you can't see shit and hearing Silent Hill music is scary because Silent Hill music is good at setting a mood, that mood being shake your pants, but this game achieves similar results with just the sound of droplets hitting the ground and footsteps. Now, this working out so well isn't just an achievement of the sound design, but it, the location being in an unknown cave, and the fact that you can see shit all work together to set a good atmosphere. But that doesn't mean that it's always on point in getting these together for a good experience. The overworld sounds don't really make for scary unless we count the sounds the mutants make, which you'll be scared by not because the sound itself is scary but because of what makes it. The actual forest to me doesn't make for as spooky of a scene as the often claustrophobic caverns, although that's subjective, and not being able to see shit quickly goes from scary to annoying as you progress through the game and get better items. So in the end, what do I think of the forest? Well, it's okay. I don't mind it. There's a lot of good and some bad, overall having more good than bad, at least from what I could tell, but then we weigh in the stuff with the PS4 port and then the view gets muddy. Really what I'm trying to say is, if you wanna get this game, get it on PC if you can because the port didn't work out like it shoulda. I hope you enjoyed this video, and with that, goodbye. <laughs>